Hi hey everyone, thanks for joining us. My name is Gemma Shackleton and I'm the marketing manager for MyVault, a range of liquid immersion coolants that serve many applications, including data centres and Bitcoin mining. I'll be your host for today, and that means as well as introducing and closing the webinar, I've got the very important task of clicking through the slides and making sure that things run nice and smoothly. As you all know, Today's webinar is about the challenges currently faced by Bitcoin miners and how liquid immersion cooling can play a part in overcoming them. We'll briefly introduce my vault before delving into the different types of immersion cooling and then explain exactly how single phase cooling with my vault can benefit your mining operations. Two interrelated case studies presented by Rob Walder of TrueNov Data Solutions and Chad Peterson of Liquid Lab will demonstrate the advantages to be gained by liquid immersion cooling. We'll conclude the webinar with a Q&A session, giving you the chance to put any questions that you may have to all of our presenters. So before I move on to introducing our presenters, let me just go through some housekeeping rules for today. First of all, um, if you've dialed in, please can I ask that you mute your microphone now? All microphones should automatically be muted, but if you could just check for me, that'd be great. As I mentioned, we'll be hosting a Q&A session at the end of the webinar, and you can submit questions to us at any time via the chat window. To do this, just click the red button with the white arrow that's in the top right-hand corner of your screen. Once you've done that, a chat window will appear, and there you can enter your question um, and press the enter key, and then that will get submitted through to us. I'll select some to answer in around about 20 minutes time. So now that I've gone through some quick housekeeping rules, let me introduce you to who I'll be speaking today. So I've already told you my job title, but to tell you a little bit more about me, um, I've been looking after the MyVault brand since it was launched, um, and I've played a huge role in the brand's image and marketing materials from day one. When it comes to marketing, my background is predominantly in engineering. Um, and I've got around about 14 years experience now. And I have to say that in that experience to date, my vault is probably the most exciting product that I've worked with. I've loved being there from the start and seeing how far the brand has come since then. Moving along is James. So James O'Brien is my vault's product group director. Um, he's led the business since its inception over a year ago. And since then, my vault's made some real waves in the EV world from batteries to charging stations. We're actually leading a project as part of the UK government's Faraday Battery Challenge, which has seen us collaborate with Ricardo and Warwick University to prove the concept of liquid immersion cooling for EV battery packs. With James's lead, we're now making similar waves in other applications, including data centres and Bitcoin mining. Cyan is MyVault's business development manager. He's recently completed his MBA in business administration which saw him undertake various research pieces within both data center and Bitcoin mining applications. He has studied liquid immersion cooling within these areas immensely, and he's discussed the topic with many leaders in the field. It's safe to say that he's my go-to whenever I need to ask a question about anything concerning IT and immersion cooling. And last but not least is Mark. Mark Lashbrook is our technical manager for innovation at m and Materials, the company behind MyVault. Mark has a strong background in ester fluids spanning over 14 years and has undertaken research work alongside universities, not to mention numerous development projects with OEMs. As well as being as our technical manager for innovation, Mark is also the project manager for the ICABAT consortium, which is the name of the project that we're leading as part of the Faraday Battery Challenge, which I mentioned a moment ago. So now that I've introduced you to our presenters, I'll pass you on to James so that he can tell you a little bit more about MI materials before we discuss Bitcoin challenges and how liquid immersion cooling can help. Okay, uh, thank you, Gemma. Uh, very good morning, afternoon, evening to all of you that are joining us across the globe. It's a, a real pleasure to have you with us. I'd like to spend just a few minutes introducing you to MI materials in order to give you an understanding of the caliber of the company that we are. So, firstly, who are we? Uh, M&I Materials is a manufacturing company. We're based in Manchester in the UK, where we have our centralised operations and the core of our expertise. But what we do is manufacture specialist materials for industry and science of service applications in over 70 countries. 
And to support these efforts, we have various offices and manufacturing facilities strategically located across the globe. So, who do we sell to? Uh, well, as you can see from this list, M&I materials products are specified by some of the world's most recognised brands. Uh, to take just a few examples from this list, on the top row, second from the left, you'll see Siemens. And here, we've previously won the Global Supplier of the Year to their Transformer business. If you look on the second row, and if I take Boeing, um, we're an approved gold standard supplier into their aircraft business. Right on the bottom row, Con Edison towards the right, um, we're the preferred supplier of dielectric fluids for all their high voltage transformers in New York. So as a company, we're very well known, we're very well proven, and we work with some of the biggest names in industry and science. And that recognition that we have with these blue chip companies extends to a variety of awards that we're very proud to have won. won. And most recently, on the left, we've won an award acknowledging us as Business of the Year, which is a real recognition to all the efforts made by every single one of our employees across the globe on a daily basis. And we've also been honoured with some very high profile visits to our manufacturing facilities from high ranking diplomats as a Chinese ambassador to the UK, seen in the middle of uh, this slide, right the way through to the royal family and his royal family. Uh, His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, you can see on the right. So these are just some of the accolades that I'm very proud to share with you. So to wrap up this quick overview of our business, I just have two more slides left. Um, this first one here shows the five product divisions that we have at M&I Materials. And each of these products divisions manufacture specific products to address some of the most challenging applications in the world be that from the high-speed trains to the particle accelerators at CERN to the largest power stations and even right the way up to the International Space Station. The two product groups I want to just tell you about briefly are MyDell and MyVault. So obviously we're here to speak to you about MyVault and MyVault is a relatively new business. We've built some specific chemistry to address the needs of cryptocurrency, data centers, electric vehicles, but the point I really want to emphasize is that whilst MyVault is a relatively new business, the expertise we have isn't. Our sister product group is Mida, which is also highlighted in green. And these, this group also makes dielectric fluids and is the market leader in this technology has over 40 years of experience. And all that history and heritage of being a market leader for immersively cooling transformers that's all shared in our new product group, MyVault. Um, and the final slide that I want to leave you with is why Estes. So why did we choose Estes as the preferred chemistry to build two businesses with? Well, this slide crystallizes that decision into four key factors. First one is readily biodegradable. Our Estes are green, and that's a really important factor for us and a very important factor for a large portion of our customers. Fire safety. Our esters have high fire points, uh, particularly when compared to some of the competitive chemistries that are out there. And again, we believe that this is an important aspect of our offering, uh, particularly when some of our customers are using millions of litres in their application. Robustness. Our esters are tough. No other way to put it. They can work in really extreme conditions and difficult environments. They have excellent stability even when exposed to high levels of temperature, oxidation or humidity. And finally, longevity. We know our MyVault products are this built to last. Uh, we have a lot of experience and heritage that we've drawn on. And we expect the quality of that fluid to exceed the lifetime of the application that it's placed in. So I'm very confident that this range of MyVault esters that we're bringing to the market and really add value to anybody that's using immersion systems. With that in mind, I'd like to hand you over to our business development manager, Cyan, who can speak to you more about how MyVault can answer some of the technical issues associated with Bitcoin. Thank you, James. Uh, so moving on to the mining challenge now, uh, everyone would acknowledge that 
mining difficulty keeps increasing and the latest adjustment was the highest in the last 29 months at 15.78 billion uh, and increasing difficulty poses several challenges to the bitcoin miners firstly uh, increased hash rate is critical to remain profitable uh, more powerful miners are required to ensure that the number of hashes per second profitably produce a valid block as a result uh, asic miner hash rates have gone up 500 times since 2013 uh, even uh, these hash rates are not sufficient so overclocking becomes efficient uh, essential but it also produces more heat uh, and asic miner lifespan is reduced at higher chip temperatures uh, in inefficient air cooled systems so uh, miners need to spend even more on capex and opex which in turn makes bitcoin mining not profitable uh, however um, efficient cooling improves processing power it enables uh, asic miners to work faster and overclocking becomes more efficient uh, secondly thermal management uh, it provides ability to perform under extreme climatic conditions and finally more savings as uh, capex and opex are lowered ensuring that profitability is maintained uh, only liquid immersion cooling uh, meets these requirements uh, now i'll uh, like to hand it over to mark lashbrook who is our technical lead uh, to introduce the my world fluids Thanks very much, Sian. So we know that we need to improve thermal management and immersion cooling is the answer. But how is this done? So essentially, immersion cooling is the placing of electronic equipment into a non-conductive liquid to provide enhanced heat removal. There are two methods utilized for immersion cooling. The first method, single phase cooling, utilizes a liquid with a relatively high boiling point which is typically either hydrocarbon or ester based. The liquid will be a strong dielectric to prevent shorting of the equipment with excellent thermal conductivity and direct contact with components to draw the heat away effectively. The liquid is then typically circulated through a heat exchanger of some sort to remove that heat. This heat can then be easily recovered for a secondary use, um, be that heating water or greenhouses in colder climates. The second method is two-phase cooling. In a two-phase setup, liquid with a lower boiling point is used. When the components heat up, the liquid in contact with the surface of them boils, removing the heat energy through the phase transition from liquid to vapour. The vapour which is boiled off then rises to the top of the tank, where it is cooled by chiller coils and condenses back into the bulk fluid. In this type of system, the heat is more difficult to recover and the system must be sealed to avoid evaporative losses of the lower boiling point fluid. In this photo that we're going to show you here, you can see an example of a single phase immersion tank with standard ASIC miners submerged in a single phase liquid. So moving on, which solution should you choose? Now we are advocates of the single phase immersion technique and there are several good reasons for this. Both the single phase and the two phase uh, liquids can be directly in contact with electrically conductive components. But generally speaking, single phase liquids offer a far less cost per litre, which makes filling the tank far less costly. In addition, single phase can be operated in very simple bath designs, um, such as we saw in the photo on the previous slide. Two phase cooling, on the other hand, requires the boiling and capture of the liquid so the bath design is necessarily more complex and chiller coils needed in the lid above the, the main tank and sealing to prevent evaporative losses is essential. The additional advantages we have for our single phase coolants are that they're environmentally friendly, uh, non-toxic and biodegradable. In contrast, the fluorinated fluids that are currently offered for two phase cooling 
come from a family of chemicals which have some environmental concerns, uh, particularly for their global warming potential. Uh, these chemicals are also highly unlikely to be biodegradable. So overall, single phase cooling offers effective and efficient cooling with the possibility for heat recovery, whereas two phase systems can be more costly and complex to implement. So then a little bit more about our MIVOL range of fluids. We have two different fluids uh, currently offered in the MIVOL range for data center and Bitcoin cooling, um, the CL200 and CL300. Both of these liquids are readily biodegradable and non-toxic. Um, they both have excellent flash points and they're also uh, very stable liquids, as James mentioned earlier, with a really high level of oxidation and moisture stability. On the next slide, we'll see a chart which shows us um, the relationship between kinematic viscosity and fire point. Um, and this is useful to draw comparisons with other fluids on the market. Um, as you can see, our MyVolts TL300 liquid is uh, a high fire point liquid, which has been uh, created for the ultimate in fire safety. The one compromise with this is a slightly higher viscosity. And this means some compromise in the cooling performance of that fluid. MyVolt CL200, on the other hand, has been specifically designed to maximize cooling performance and has a lower viscosity than similar types of fluids such as synthetic hydrocarbons and transformer oils that might otherwise be used. The advantage with our esters is despite that lower viscosity, it also retains a higher fire point than those other fluids. But I don't just want you to take my word for it. Um, now I'd like to hand over to two of our users to talk about their experience. Um, and I'll start with Rob at True North Data Systems to tell you about his journey with immersion cooling and how he came to choose my book. I thank you very much. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to share our experience with the MyVolt liquid immersion fluid. And uh, first of all, I'll just give you a little background. I've been doing IT infrastructure and operations for about 30 years. Uh, for the past uh, three and a half years, focusing most of my experience uh, and, and knowledge into the cryptocurrency mining uh, infrastructure space. Uh, with True North, uh, we uh, had a couple challenges that we were experiencing in our air-cooled data centers. Uh, first and foremost, uh, dust and humidity and temperature fluctuations that are very wide uh, in, in the different climates that we're hosting in, both uh, in, in the northern climates and in the southern climates, were very detrimental to our equipment and uh, shortened the lifespan uh, and also limited the productivity and hash power that we were able to get out of our equipment. And to, as we looked for solutions to that, uh, we immediately gravitated towards liquid immersion and, and researched many different types of uh, liquid immersion and fluids. Uh, ultimately, we found the MyVolt uh, fluid to be the most accepting uh, to our requirements in its lower viscosity and higher fire point, uh, flash point. And um, it's overall, um, oh, thank you, appreciate that. And it's overall um, uh, performance within our test tanks that we've deployed and, and uh, have been uh, working with over the past several, uh, about a year and a half now. And um, we were able to achieve uh, at least a 30 to 40% uh, uh, enhancement of performance of the equipment. And also we uh, were able to prove that uh, the equipment just runs more stably over time. So um, this not only, uh, we, we also tested a two-phase two system and uh, found it very complex and lost uh, quite a bit of fluid uh, to evaporation uh, overnight. One of our tanks had a seal that was broken and we lost about $5,000 in, in fluid in one evening. So um, we've been very happy and satisfied with the performance of the MyVolt fluid and uh, very excited about using it uh, moving forward. And uh, as we continue to grow and develop uh, hardware and optimizations around our, our, our hardware. Uh, so with that, I'd like to turn it over to one of our uh, valued uh, partners and friends in the in the space, uh, Chad with Liquid Labs. Thank you, Rob. Um, 
it's good to be here today to talk about MyVolt. It's been a, a long time search for Liquid Lab to find a, a fluid that actually works, that isn't expensive, it doesn't evaporate all your profits into the atmosphere. But uh, we've been working for the last three years testing uh, and designing immersion cooling systems. And before that, strictly air cooling. We've used uh, 3M fluids, two-phase fluids, as Rob uh, suggested. We've used Novec 7100, Novec FC72, and then switched to single-phase fluids, uh, synthetic PAOs, synthetic um, motor oil even. And finally, we uh, discovered MyVolt, and we concentrated exclusively on that. Um, it was the, um, the two-phase fluid with the fluid losses and the expense and the complicated engineering that uh, is one of the reasons we switched. We've tested these designs in a dozen different tanks from temperatures ranging from like 30, minus 30 to plus 30. We've tested with Canaan machines, Bitmain, MicroBT, Cheetah, and others. And um, the number one reason I think to switch to immersion cooling is the ability to overclock. As you can see, we can overclock um, quite easily 30%, but all the way up to 60%. And this overclocking gives you the ability to get more hash with the same amount of machines. So you don't have to spend as much money on machines and you can also protect your investment with immersion cooling. Um, leads me to the second point, which is longevity. Moore's law is dead. Processing power of ASICs are no longer increasing exponentially. Uh, you can only shrink the transistor so much. Right now we're at seven or eight nanometers, but maybe we can go to five, but then what? In the past, we've seen S9s last about four years, but um, the current generation, I guess it's, it's safe to assume that we might have to have them last uh, four years as well. So one of the other benefits of, of immersion cooling is that we see less downtime and reboots. And even with the latest batch of S17s, we've seen them operating quite well with MyVolt. Another benefit of immersion cooling is that there's the ability to hash in a wide range of climates. Um, we've seen a lot of interest in Texas and mining in North America in hot climates where there's cheap uh, electricity rates. And this leads us to come up with a solution that uh, solves those problems. Another ability to, that I appreciate is that we're working on a, um, a project that takes the heat from the oil to heat a greenhouse in British Columbia. So that's another benefit of immersion cooling. And the machines just use less power when their chips are cool. The chips can use up to 200 watts less per machine just by cooling the chips uh, 10 degrees less than an A6A running at 90 degrees C. And the ultimate goal of any operator is to have the machines just run steady, steady state. And I think oil is as close as possible to steady state is currently available. So in summary, I'd like to say that I'm excited to see the shift of mining in, to North America from China. And I think the shift from air cool to liquid cool is, uh, is the next step. So I'd like to hand it back to Mark. Thanks very much, Chad, and Rob, for the, the case studies there, really useful information for us. Um, so I hope the, uh, the webinar has given you a good introduction to single phase cooling with MyVol and some food for thought uh, for your future installations. Um, the case studies presented have shown how you can in increase your installation density, speed up your hash rates, uh, and you know, importantly, maximize your reliability. Um, and all those factors together, you know, offer excellent cost savings in CapEx and OpEx. Um, and the option to recover waste heat um, overall makes you know, the possibility for Bitcoin mining to be more environmentally friendly and, and save end, end users more money. Um, so overall, you know, we believe the MyVault liquids have the potential to, 
to minimize the environmental impact of Bitcoin cooling and give you excellent performance gains. Um, we can now move on to some questions from the audience. Thanks for the summary, Mark. Um, okay, so some questions have been coming in during the session. Um, I've selected a few, so I'll now put these to our presenters. Uh, the first question I'll push your way, Rob. I think you're definitely the best person to answer it. Uh, Daniel has asked, how cost effective is immersion cooling? So um, the cost effectiveness of liquid immersion cooling, that, that's a great question. And uh, a lot of people make the assumption that it's just uh, more expensive and uh, they, they tend to turn, be turned off uh, right from the get-go. But the reality is we've run models um, extensively comparing li uh, liquid immersion to air-cooled systems. And in every case, uh, liquid immersion always comes out uh, as a more profitable option. Um, and one of the ways that you can you can interpret that is um, the um, uh, it's almost like buying um, uh, 70 machines and getting a hundred machines worth of hash power. Uh, you don't have to um, put as much money into the equipment uh, purchase up front because you know you're going to get 30 to 40 percent more output from every uh, every machine. And so uh, limits your upfront capital expenditure in equipment. And um, your equipment is also going to last longer and it's going to be easier and lower cost to maintain, uh, let alone not having all those fans to run and to purchase. And, and we're also uh, building liquid immersion specific servers and others are doing the same, which will be lower cost hardware as well. So uh, in, in every case, the models do show that liquid immersion is more profitable than air-cooled systems. That's great. Thanks, Rob. Uh, next question. This has come from John. Uh, he's put, how compatible is MyVault Fluid with IT components? Um, Mark, I think you're probably best to answer this one. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, Gemma. Um, well, we have a, a very long-term experience with ester-based liquids in um, high-voltage equipment going back 40 years. Um, and that means we have a very good understanding of compatibility of our products with a, you know, a pretty wide range of materials. Um, for Bitcoin mining applications specifically, we've been conducting laboratory trials um, to evaluate the, the compatibility with boards and components. Um, on the whole, our esters are, are very compatible with the materials used in Bitcoin mining. Uh, and certainly at the moderate temperatures we see in this application, We've not seen any adverse effects on the boards or any components mounted on the boards. Um, the one thing we have found, um, some cables insulated with PVC may soften uh, in our ester liquids, and that's due to the polymer being plasticized somewhat, um, whereas they would tend to harden up in uh, a hydrocarbon-based type liquid. Um, so there are some different behaviors observed in esters, but nothing that we found that um, foods the use of, of the fluids. Um, there is some compatibility information in our liquid brochures. Um, and the other you know, big thing to mention is we're always available to support our customers you know, and consult on specific materials they might want to use. Uh, and that can be done through our, our technical inquiry links. Great. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Chad, this question is for you. Uh, Neil has asked, what are the specific requirements when it comes to tank design? The tank design is, is dependent on the climate that you're in, but the key is to keep those chips in a stable, steady environment without changes in temperature. And this will reduce the number of reboots and errors and increase the uptime. Uh, traditionally, in, in air-cooled uh, mining situations, the uptime could be as low as 80%. So keeping the machines stable in temperature is critical, and to make that, that possible, a low viscosity fluid like my volts is necessary to keep that flow rate high and also to keep the the, the oil from being contaminated uh, from moisture or dust or oxygen and my volt has the ability to handle that moisture higher uh, higher ability than other fluids so it also has an excellent lifespan so i i i would think that flow rate and viscosity and the ability to maintain this dielectric strength. It's one of the critical aspects in design. 
Thanks, Chad. Um, I think we've got time just to squeeze one more question in. Um, so, Cyan, um, I'll let you take this one. Okay. Todd has asked, why should he use MyVol instead of other hydrocarbons like mineral oils and synthetic hydrocarbons? Um, uh, thanks, Gemma, for the question. This is a very important question in my opinion, and I was uh, kind of expecting this question too. Uh, Firstly, uh, mineral oils and other synthetic hydrocarbons are not manufactured with the intent for use in IT equipments or electronic applications. Uh, a very common practice is to blend different food grade oils together uh, and, and try to make it suitable for IT cooling applications. So uh, material compatibility, quality consistency, and reliability of supply of these fluids are the key concerns in my opinion. Um, secondly, uh, mineral oils may uh, contain corrosive sulfur, which damages the IT equipment in the long term. Uh, mineral oil is not biodegradable as well, uh, so it is not environment friendly. Whereas if we compare that to MyVolt, MyVolt fluids are specifically innovated for use in IT applications through extensive research and development. Uh, and also as explained by Mark, uh, MyVolt has a lower viscosity, uh, it provides a higher fire safety, it's inherently more robust to oxidation and moisture, which enhances the longevity of the fluid. So, um, I mean, uh, you won't like to purify or replace the fluid often, uh, because that increases your operational costs. So uh, finally, uh, I would like to mention that coupled with these uh, technical aspects, uh, MNI Materials is the largest manufacturer of dielectric esters and for various uh, high performance applications as well. And we are committed to sharing our long term experience and expertise with our partners in the value chain. So in short, uh, we are not selling a commodity here. Uh, we are offering a complete package of solutions for our customers. Uh, so I think it is uh, very simple uh, to decide uh, in which type of fluid you would like to immerse your IT components, especially when they're worth millions of dollars. So uh, I hope that answers the question. That's great. Thanks, Lion. Um, okay, so we did receive quite a few questions. Um, Obviously, I couldn't answer all of them, but don't worry, we've got them all. They've come through to us. Uh, we'll come back to everyone in the next couple of days via email. Um, but if you do think of something to ask later today, or even if it's next week, please feel free just to take down our presenters' contact details, and then you can drop them an email and ask them a question yourself. Um, if you have any queries for Rob and Chad, again, just send them to us, and we'll make sure that they get passed on and that you get replied to. Um, all that's left for me to say uh, is thanks to you all for taking the time to be with us today. Um, we hope you found the session useful and informative. Hopefully it's highlighted how superior liquid immersion cooling is when it's compared to other cooling methods out there and the major differences between single phase and two phase liquid cooling solutions. If you'd like to find out more about our range of dielectric coolants, uh, do visit myvault.com under the resources section you'll be able to download our range of data sheets as well as some product application brochures. So thanks again, everyone. Uh, and especially thanks to Rob and Chad for joining us today. Um, I'm going to close the webinar down now. So stay safe and take care.